let's just, um, I'm going to go to a chain real quick for Apple. I'm going to add some other things in here as well. This is going to be for Dana. All right. And let's go a couple of weeks out. Let's just look at the April 9th. We're looking at uh, the call and put chain here. And Dana asks, can you go over gamma risk? Oh, sorry, and how it is used, how it is measured and used. Okay. The gamma of the option, of course, is the rate in which your delta changes. So as we know, if I'm in a call and I have a delta of 0.5, such as the 121 call here at 0.52, if Apple moves up a point to 122.21 on Monday, I'd expect this option to gain 52 cents. I just added it for the puts, not the calls, I'm sorry. Likewise, we're at the 121 strike here for the put. If the stock moves up one point, I'm gonna to expect to lose the delta of about 0.48. If it drops down to 120.21, I'm going to expect my option to gain 48 cents on the put. So what is gamma? Gamma is now the expected change of the delta for the one point movement in the stock. Let's just stick with calls. I think it's easier. And I'm going to make sure that I add all the Greeks into just our call chain. I should have done that first, but that's okay. So we've got delta, gamma, theta, vega, rho. I don't need the other ones, but we're going to go ahead and do that. And I want to change the column order because we really want gamma to be next to the delta in this case to really see it. And I'll put theta up there too. Okay. Fantastic. So here's our April 9th calls. The 121 at the money strike, again, we mentioned has a delta of 0.52 and a gamma of 0 0.056, let's call it. So if this goes up to 122.21 on Monday, we would expect the option price to get up 52 cents. So this would go from 258 to 310. That's our change in the option price based on Delta naturally. But everything works hand in hand, meaning the Delta is gonna have to change now as well. Okay, so the Delta is going to shift as well for a one point movement in the stock now that we're at 122.21. So we'd expect the delta to go up from 0.52 in this case to 0.0.576. Let's just call it, okay? So the 0.559 added to this structure, that puts me up to 0 0.576. We're talking about a call that I sold. I'm sorry, we're talking about a call that I bought. My apologies. So it's increasing in my favor as it's going, going up. The delta is going to adjust based on the expected gamma move. And at the same time, then the gamma will change as well. As the stock keeps going up and increasing in price, you're gonna see slightly lower gammas as you get closer to a one delta, because it doesn't have much room to move. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really at the money is where your highest gamma is. Okay, you can see that here, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 range. As you go deeper in the money, the gamma is less. As you go deeper out of the money, the gamma is less as well. It's really at the money has the peak. It's sort of like the at the money uh, time value. You have the highest theta decay at the money because you have the highest time value at that point. The at the money bell curve we talk about. Where does this come into play? Okay, does it come into play really on a covered call? Not really. Does it come into play on a long call? Well, if it starts to move against you, you can estimate what the change in delta is going to be to gauge your losses. Where the gamma really starts to come in, of course, is in diagonal spreads, calendar spreads, uh, maybe even vertical spreads in that case. And let's just stick with Apple. And we were looking at April 9th, I believe. And let's do that in the money. Let's stick with the 121. We'll do an at the money bull call debit. All right, so we're going to sell the 121 call. We're going to buy the deeper in the money 119. All right, so there's our standard debit spread. Let's get a little better view here with the slider. More of a wider picture here, folks. Uh, sorry, there we go. Okay, let's get a little bit wider. Great. Now, what did we, of course, already see? Well, we know that right now, Dana, that our 121 call that we sold has a delta 
of 0 0.58, and we have our gamma of 0 0.0559. So 0.2, I'm sorry, it was, it was 0.52 is our delta, okay? Now, actually, we're going to buy the 119, which is going to have a slightly lower gamma, as we saw on the chain. And we're going to have a higher delta, though, as well. So our delta is going to be higher. And uh, let's just get that number real quick. I'll leave the drawings there for the time being. Let's go back to the chain. Fantastic. Oh, the ninth. Excellence. 119. I'll jot this down. Delta of 0.63. And our gamma is 0 0.0529. Okay. Okay. Let's go back down here. Everything lines up. So I'm in a spread now, and this one might not even be the a vertical spread. The, the gamma risk might not really even apply in this case. I, I don't use gamma risk on vertical spreads, honestly. I can see it in diagonals, and that's when I typically use it. But in any case, Delta of 0.52 on our sold, delta of 0.63 on our long, and we have a gamma of 0 0.0529. So we've got a small gamma difference here. Now, what is my gamma risk? As the stock moves up, this one here has the higher gamma, which means it's going to affect the delta more. And that's actually a negative to me. Why? Because this is the option I sold. Okay, so this delta is going to be increasing faster as the stock moves up. But that's okay because that's what I want the structure to do. I want it to go up, get a better probability, and get closer to expiration and have that better structure. But in this case, what you'd see is because you sold this option, it's negative. So this is a negative larger gamma against you. The delta is smaller, but it's going to increase faster because this gamma is lower. And as we saw, as it goes deeper out of the money, the gamma is going to drop. So is this one in that case, but that's what you're looking at. In the combination of two options, multi-leg spreads, or if you're using three or four-leg spreads, Dana, the gamma risk is the options that you're short. The risk of how fast the delta is going to increase against you because you're going to need to buy that back if you need to liquidate the position or close the position as part of your trading plan. We are not gaining as much delta on the deeper in the money option that you bought. But again, a lot of times for just a vertical spread, I don't get caught up in a lot of these Greeks and my gamma risk or my theta risk because if the stock is going up, can I say percentage wise, this short option is increasing faster? which looks bad for me as a buyback cost. But as time's going on, the price is also getting lower and it's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's going up. Okay, so now, opposite of that, if the stock falls, because we did an at the money one here with a lower probability. So if the stock falls here, what does that mean? Well, that means that both of them are dropping, which in this case, remember, because my gamma is going to decline, my option is going to lose by the delta in theory, not always 100%, but it's always close. <laughs> but the stock is going to fall. My option premium is going to decline by the delta, and the delta is going to decline by the rate of the gamma. And that's okay because that means I can buy it back more cheaply. But as a sentiment, as the structure of a whole, it's not going against me. So remember what options you're long and sold if it's a call and a put. And that's going to give you the way to calculate your gamma risk in a spread. All right. So the short option, you have a negative gamma working against you technically, the one that you sold. And then the long option is technically a positive gamma in that case. And that's your risk. And it flips if you're in a credit or in a debit, of course, because of the option you're selling and the option that you're buying. Uh, but in general, that works the same way. See, the bull puts would be different. The deeper out of the money one would have a lower gamma as well. Uh, but this is in the money, and you're long this position. I don't want it to increase in price, though. I'm sorry, I do want this one to continue to increase in price, but it's increasing slower than the short option, which I'm a negative towards. In the bull put, as, this, as it moves up, both options are getting closer to zero, which is what I want as well. I don't care if they're both losing money in gamma, but when it starts to turn against you, that's what the effect is of the 
gamma risk, okay? Okay, so you said, okay, thanks. I was thinking that the short leg at the money at expiration may end up in the money and force unwanted assignment. Okay, a good rule of thumb on that, whether I'm in a credit spread, uh, debit spread, or even if you've just sold a call against, a covered call against a position that you don't want to get assigned. And in this case, even if the stock, you know, today, for example, let's say this was a spread I was in that I had opened a couple weeks ago, bull put or a bull call debit, it doesn't matter. And the stock's trading at 121 here. I'm sorry, it's 121.21, but we sold the 121 strike. Now, if I'm in a bull put and I'm worried that this 20 cents isn't enough comfort for me at four, I'm sorry, 330, 345, I probably would have liquidated that bull put, maybe paid a debit of 12 cents, maybe five cents, maybe three cents, just to close it for peace of mind, just to close it early. If it's that close, you may just want to close the position early. Still try to get 90, 95% of what you expected to make on the position, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I don't know a level to tell you because uh, every stock is maybe different as we get closer to expiration. Let's look. Did we update yet? Let's look at today's expirations. Okay, yeah. So the gammas, you know, we're still seeing the highest gamma right at the money, of course. And uh, the 121 didn't end up being in the money. That's what I'd want for the bull call debit not the bull put. <laughs> well, I would want to be out of the money. I'm sorry, I would want to be out of the money with the bull put, which it would be. So that's fine. But if I was worried about the chance, I'd close it. Um, but each stock's probably going to be a little bit different. And a lot of these, you know, you can see they're going to zero very quickly. And you're going to see the deltas getting closer to either one or zero very quickly as we get closer to expiration as well. All right. So that's the, the gamut. Of course, remember, if you're tracking positions, I don't think I have any spread positions in the portfolio right now. Um, where was that? What did we do last week? Was it, oh, March 12th. Let's see what we put in for March 12th, two weeks ago. I don't think we did any spreads. We just did three covered calls. But of course, as you're tracking the positions in the portfolio and you're seeing your uh, rollout opportunities, adjustments, liquidation versus future expiration, now let's click on the Greeks view there. And this will give you the uh, gamma for the position. So my open call for April right now is a 0 0.0388. Uh, it's the 55 call that's deep in the money-ish because the stock's trading up at 60 uh, right now. Um, so yeah, there's my gamma there. And then it would give you the sum of the total delta and total gamma on your portfolio. Uh, so that's just a quick way that you can look at your gamma exposure. Your delta exposure, your theta exposure, uh, positive or negative there, uh, based on if you sold or bought the option. So you can uh, quickly see a sum or just look at an individual spread position uh, for that as well. Dana, you want to take a look there. 